I'm going to show you a really easy method on how to calculate bond prices as well as bond yields in Excel. But before we get rolling, make sure you click on the lower right to subscribe to this channel where I make finance fun for students. Okay, let's assume, let's set it this up. Coca-Cola issues a bond with the following terms. A $1,000 par, 10-year maturity, 6% coupon, and semi-annual interest payments. Now, the coupon is just a contracted rate, so that's not the yield. That's just a contracted rate that Coca-Cola decides upon. And the $1,000 par is what you're going to get back at maturity. But let's say that Coca-Cola is able to issue this bond with a yield to maturity of 5.5%. If I know the yield to maturity and all these other um, stipulations, I can come up with the price of the bond. Now, conversely, let's say I want to figure out the yield. Everything is the same here. But this time, instead of knowing the uh, yield, I don't know the yield, I do know the bond price in this case. Let's say the bond price is 968.75, so it's trading at a discount to par. So in this case, what would be the yield to maturity? If I know the price, then I can calculate the yield to maturity. If I know the yield to maturity, then I can calculate the price. Okay, so let's go ahead and work through this, and let's do this in Excel. So I've got the terms over there. Let's just type them all in here. And I'm going to do the longer method first, and then I'll show you a really easy method at the end. So par, $1,000. The, the payment is going to be 6% times 1,000. But remember, there's two payments a year. So we cut the payment in half. So we're going to divide it by two. So each six months, we're going to get $30. There's going to be 20 of those payments. And the reason there's going to be 20 is there's 10 years two payments a year. The yield to maturity, we know that that's 5.5%. Now, here's the challenge. Um, the yield to maturity, we're going to discount it at half of that because we're going to make, and you'll see this when we discount these cash flows, two of those a year. So the, the discount rate's actually going to be half of 5.5%. I'll show you that. Okay, the cash flow. So we got that. We know that that's going to be $30 every single six months. So we're going to lock that number down. We're going to highlight C7. We're going to hit F4 on our computer and there we put a dollar sign in front of the C, a dollar sign in front of the 7. That allows us to drag this down and always reference C7. So I went ahead and did that. Now the present value, oh one thing I messed up. The very last payment I'm going to add in a thousand dollars because I get my par back. Oops. I get my par back at the end. I get my value back if I'm um, an investor with Coca-Cola bonds. Okay, so I lend them a thousand, and at the end I get my thousand back and I get all those payments in between. So the, what's the present value of each of these cash flows? So I take thirty dollars, I divide it by one plus the discount rate. Well the discount rate is the yield. But again it's every six months so it's really the yield divided by two. Now here's the other thing. Let's go ahead and hit enter there. A couple things I want to make an adjustment on on this. First of all, I'm always going to reference 5.5%. So I'm going to hit F4 on this one as well. All right? Put a dollar sign in front. The other thing is, I'm going to raise it, and this is going to make no sense at all, but I'm going to raise it to the first power. I'm going to, I'm going to link that. I'm going to raise it to the cell B13, which is 1. Obviously, when you raise any number to the first power, it's just the number itself. So it doesn't change anything. But watch what I can do now. I can double click this and now this month it raises it to the B14th power. It raises it to the second power and here it raises it to the third power and that's what you want when you do discounting. Future cash flows are discounted at these higher uh, exp exponents. Third, fourth, fifth, all the way down to the 20th power. The price of the bond is simply going to be the summation of all of these present values. So we just sum all that up. Put my cursor there. And I get $1,038.07. Notice that the price is higher than the par amount. So the bond is trading at a premium. It's trading at $38.07 above par. Why is that? Well, that's because the coupon is above the yield to maturity. When the coupon is above the yield to maturity, the bond's going to trade at a premium. When the coupon is below the yield to maturity, the bond is going to trade at a discount. 
Now here, let me show you an easier way you can calculate this. Okay. You go over here to AutoSum, you hit more functions, and let's say you want to do uh, present value. That's all we want to do, present value. Type that in, and actually this PV comes up. You want, you want PV, that's the present value. So you hit OK here, and this box comes up. So the rate is the yield of maturity. Now it's this, I can just link to that 5.5%. 5, 5 I can just link to it, so I link to C9, but remember, two payments a year, it's C9 divided by 2. The number of periods, I can just click on that 20. The payment, we know it's 30. The future value is going to be 1,000. That's the, that's the money I get back at the very end. And I hit OK. Now I get the same number. You see it's in red. It's, it's a minus number. The reason is, is because it's assuming that I invest 1,038. So 1,038 leaves my pocket, and then all these cash flows come in. So the 1,038 is, in, is a minus. It's out of my pocket. And then all, the thir all these $30 payments and that $1,000 payment at the end is a, are plus signs. They're coming in. Okay? So um, let me do one other thing here just to keep it on the same cadence here. I'm going to put a minus sign in front of that. And then you can see it's the same number. Okay? Beautiful. Now, so that's the easy way to do to calculate bond prices, but I thought I'd show you the hard way first so you understand what's going on. The yield of maturity, we're just going to do the easy way right away. So let's say we've got par, we've got the payment, we've got the number of periods, and we've got the price. This time I'm going to express the price as a negative number, just like I did on the prior page, uh, because if I don't, then it's not all going to work. I'm going to get a, a, a nonsensical uh, error. Okay? So for the yield of maturity here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go right over here. I hit more functions, and I do see rate is there because I've used that before. We actually want to use rate here. That's what we want to do. So let's hit rate and hit go. And then the number of periods, 20. The payment, $30. The present value, that's the price. It's that minus 968. Again, if you don't have a minus 9 there, you're going to get, you're going to get an error. And the future value is 1,000. Look how easy that is. Now, I'm going to hit OK, and you're like, wait a second, 3.21, that seems kind of low. Well, it's because that's a six-month rate. So I'm going to multiply that by 2, and I get 6.43%. Does that make sense? This bond's trading at a discount. If it's trading at a discount, that means the yield is higher than the coupon, and it is. 6.43 is above 6%, and that makes sense that the bond then is trading at a discount. This is why, by the way, when interest rates go up, bond prices go down. When bond prices go down, or excuse me, when interest rates go up, bond prices go down. And that's what's happened here. This interest rate has gone from 5.5 to 6.43%. So the bond price went from 1038 on the prior page to 968 here. All right. So when interest rates go up, bond prices go down. When interest rates go down, bond prices go up. Okay. So I hope you found this video informative. Really easy to calculate this stuff. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to su subscribe because on this channel, this is where I make finance fun for students. Thank you.